Hey guys, it's Gunrunner7271. Wanted to show you what I've been doing for the last month or so. As most of you know, we moved to a smaller farmhouse with a stable and a couple acres of pasture. So, we've been stocking up. Got with an extreme couponer and we have been racking up great deals, if not free deals. For all my prepper friends, if you're not using Extreme Couponing, you are missing the boat. Most of the stuff that's bulk stuff from Sam's Club or whatever was not purchased on Extreme Couponing. But all this rice and stuff like this, Extreme Couponing. We got uh, au gratin potatoes. We got a lot of stack of that stuff. Stovetop turkey or uh, stovetop dressing. We got, I don't know, probably half dozen boxes of that. Ah, starter kits from LDS. Um, we've got six starter kits. Um, we've got, uh, let's see, correction, seven, because this is a single. We've got three under each kid's bed and this one. we got Bisquick in a big box, but we also have this big bag right here of pancake mix. It's uh, Krusty's Buttermilk Pancake Mix, and it's 10 pounds of pancake mix, which makes quite a bit more when you put the water with it and the milk or whatever. We've got, I don't know, too many to count, ramen noodles and beef and chicken, and there's a bulk pack in the back from Sam's Club. We have 36 boxes of Hamburger Helper, four boxes of Tuna Helper, and a dozen boxes of chicken helper cheesy skillets we got I don't know eight to ten boxes of cheesy skillets dinners that's the stuff you just mix in your chicken with and mix it all in one skillet so you can cook it all at one time um, we only have two boxes of shells for tacos but we do have a god awful lot of macaroni and cheese I do mean a god awful lot okay um, we got water stored in behind there. There's uh, bottled water stored in behind that. Noodles. Oh my God, we got more noodles and pasta than I care to talk about. All that Barilla pasta goes the full two foot depth of the shelf. Okay, so can't have the Barilla pasta without pasta sauce or tomato sauce or ragu. We got tomato sauce that never copper made. We got some tomato juice. This stuff out front, I haven't figured out what to do with it, okay? These two things don't even belong here. Um, they belong in the house and the houseware stuff. This stuff here is our snack section. That's probably why I left them here. This is all snacky type foods. Breakfast essentials from Sam's Club. Del Monte fruit cups from Sam's Club, which are great if you have kids. In the back, we've got some Special K stuff. We've got some fruit dried of different types. We've got pop tarts. Um, we got more nuts than any squirrel would use in a year. All this stuff came for little to no money through extreme couponing. We've got, uh, well, obviously we got kids, so we got to have stuff for them. We have, speaking of coffee, we have a big, I don't know how many pound bag, box or can it's a it's like like a number 10 can in the house a maxwell house we got javalia coffee i've got four or five bags in the house and they're opened um you know guys this stuff's kind of overlooked and a pre it's a comfort item it's kind of overlooked got some hills brother cappuccino mix these are a late arrival two hours ago late arrival all kinds of beans. We've got black eyed peas, we've got black beans, we've got red beans, we've got uh, pinto beans. So these all be bagged up. I'm going to leave them in the bag, put this, these bags in a mylar bag in a five gallon bucket. Done deal. So we got uh, a number 10 can of cheese sauce, which we'll probably be getting four or five more of those. I'm planning on using one every two months so you know it's got a resealable lid on it it's pretty nice vinegar multiple uses 
you can put the vinegar in your canner when you're canning we've got three gallons see and one quart here another quart that's opened inside that's plenty enough for a while let's see we only have one little box of non-fat dry milk which I will be increasing as soon as I can find that in bulk I looked at Sam's Club and they laughed at me so we've got uh, eight pounds of Morton salt we're about uh, I don't know we probably should use about 10 or 15 more of these about a dozen more would be fine they're four pounds each that's a good trade item if nothing else um, we've got some O2 absorbers some sweetener in the bag we've also got another bag in the house this big and it's opened uh, only slightly used uh, Montreal steak seasoning you'll find out why I got this in a little bit we got uh, malted milk uh, I think I bought that by mistake we got a gallon of olive oil we probably should have another gallon of that just for food prep we had uh, two quarts of applesauce we're probably gonna have to increase that and one of the things I'm gonna try this year is to make my own applesauce okay um, there we got a big gallon tote of dill pickle chips can you tell what kind of uh, what my kids like to eat we got a four pack of, of jelly and a bunch of peanut butter not nearly enough peanut butter okay but it's a good start lemon juice for canning um, you know we got two quarts here and as you guys know we have a lot of pancake mix we got 10 pounds of pancake mix which will probably make 20 pounds when they're wet so we're gonna have a lot of syrup okay now in the back here we got some uh, we've got all sorts of canning jars anywhere I can I'm gonna be putting these canning jars once we start canning um, you know we're gonna be putting a lot of this canned stuff away okay I can tell you that um, we're gonna leave them in the boxes so they stay contained and they're easier to store but we're gonna be rocking some canned goods here soon um, here's our drink section you know kids like the Capri Suns we got Tang, Kool-Aid and Lemonade we got some electrolyte drinks or Powerade Zeros they have zero sugar in them that's usually for me since I'm a diabetic again this is some of Kent uh, Ember Copper's home fixings this is the uh, chicken with rice soup that we made we got some chicken here cream of chicken um, various assorted canned goods these are just the onesies and twosies so we'll keep these and we'll try to work on increasing our volume of these but in the meantime we will fill in with uh, home canned stuff and some of this stuff I don't even like I bought it for barter material in case the world ends or gets you know things get crazy um, no I don't have a cow out back but I do have two bulk packs of cereal plus um, you know any other type of cereal you might want every time it goes on sale she buys a bunch of it so uh, here's some hot cereal bulk pack from Sam's Club we got a variety pack and then we have my favorite fudge brownies cake mixes every time they go on sale she gets a coupon and gets them for daggone near nothing guys you gotta hit the extreme couponing okay we got two flats and two cans of Van de Kamp's pork and beans now that's a whole lot of gas right there friends whole lot um, let's see we got these bulk packs of green beans there's several bulk packs of green beans there's several bulk packs of whole kernel corn there's some loose cans there's uh, two flats of tomato soup plus some loose cans two flats of chicken noodle plus loose cans a flat of cream of mushroom loose and loose cans on top right here we got a ravioli and all our chef boy RD stuff mini ravioli beef ravioli um, then we got a bulk pack on the bottom she got a good deal on some progresso soups and uh, you know she bought those um, we got a bulk pack of manwich mix we got beans 
all sorts of well that's vegetable beef right right there in the blue can but all of that right there are different types of beans that are canned that's crazy isn't it there's a bunch of it there must be I don't know a dozen half cans there now the lime tote is full of condiments I mean just chuck full of condiments salad dressing you know barbecue sauces a1 you name it miracle whip mayo mustard ketchup you name it it's all full now why do we got a lot of condiments well we got a lot of food got a lot of frozen food here this is a two by three deep freeze and uh, this was her deep freeze and it was pretty much full I added a few things to it but uh, here's my deep freeze it's not quite full but deer season's a little far off right now this is uh first week of June and deer season doesn't kick in until uh, I want to say September first first week or September or last week of September something like that let's see what's in this big one. Oh my goodness there's a hind quarter in there how about that we got uh, all sorts of steaks on the top shelf roasts and patties or some loaves of bread mixed in some lunch meat that's frozen we got a good deal on we just got anything and everything the bag of ice I talked about in that in a different video but should the need arise to dump all these coolers we can dump these coolers into we can dump these these deep freezes into coolers which I keep next to keep a whole series of coolers this isn't all of them by the way there's some 150 quart coolers out in the garage close by um, that I keep near the deep freezes that way we can take the big things of ice and drop on everything keep it cold for at least five days guys this is what I've been doing I got all my prep stuff up here um, the place is still kind of rough we got to paint all over and I know I know just cleaning up this place was was uh, quite a chore and it's been very taxing working every day and, and uh, you know Prepper Arian started uh, a new job and it's been having her hair pulling, you know, pulling her hair out. So hopefully within uh, the next two weeks, we'll be putting both canners to work. Uh, the All Americans back in the back. Both canners. I got a big old stew pot that's like, I don't know, 25 quarts or something. Or 20, yeah. Something like that. And we're going to put all this stuff to use finally. God, finally. Tis the season. There's a farmer's market. We didn't get a garden in this year, but there is a farmer's market. I'm kind of glad I didn't build a garden for someone else to use at the old place. But, uh, you know, we came across this deal. We jumped on it. Um, it puts us out in the country and uh, where we want to be and a little more self-reliant. Um, by the way, um, inside our pantry... We have a 25-pound bag of sugar, a 10-pound bag of brown sugar, uh, two 25-pound bags of Mahatma rice, and a 13.5-pound bag of baking soda. Now, we're going to buy about 10 of those bags of baking soda. Mahatma rice, we're going to get that up to 100 pounds, 50 pounds of sugar, um, probably 30 or 40 pounds of brown sugar um, you know that's just that's just what we're prepping in our pantry and guys I want to tell you I'm gonna, I'm gonna spin this around here real quick I want to tell you one of the reasons that I chose not to go with a whole whole bunch of long-term storage stuff I left room for the long-term storage stuff and I'll be working on that um, right now having kids it's it's just not feasible they want everyday food so in order to to get them to eat we have to get everyday food for them now we talked about in a previous video where um, eat the stuff before you go out to you know 
start eating this stuff, you know, I'm not going to have such a rough transition going from the long-term storage food to what I have stocked up. As this pantry gets, as we use something, we write it down, we replace it. That way we know we have a minimum quantity. What you see here is a minimum quantity, okay? Again, we have a big family and we have to maintain a minimum quantity so that if something should happen and they collapse on this house with no other place to go, seeking refuge, seeking food, shelter, and security, um, I'm going to be that guy to help them out. Can't give them everything. My family comes first. But again, we will work up a, a plan that will let them bring all their stuff with them so that we combine everything and create a, um, a community-based kind of thing where we're cooking for a bunch of people. Guys, this is just one of our homestead videos. Got some videos coming up with the horses, Ozzy and Hustler. Came with the deal, what can I say? Uh, my OPEC busters, they, they work cheap too. Cheap, cheap. Um, <laughs> Uh, I don't know what else to tell you guys. I'm, I'm getting happier. There's a lot of hard work. There's a lot of chores. I mean, they're just the painting and stuff to get this place ready. We haven't even unpacked everything yet. I mean, we're still, we still have a two and a half car garage full of stuff where we combine households to make one household. And we haven't even set up my shop yet. So there is a huge amount of work to do and it is just staggering. But I had to get this video up. Um, the other video I'll show you will have like hygiene stuff for, um, you know, it'll just be hygiene stuff. I've already made that video and I'll include it with this one so that you guys can see what we've been doing with extreme couponing. Um, look for a whole series of the homestead videos because we made a decision to not move not stay in suburbia we made a decision to not not go to the city um, for obvious reasons I work in the city and and work in suburbia and I don't want to be one of those people that that are trapped okay um, guys uh, I hope you all watch the next series of videos because it will it will educate you on my transition from not quite being a city slicker to a country boy, but all the things that, that happen when you move, just the simple uh, thing of moving. One thing I can tell you, I did use this as an exercise to see how much time it would take for me to bug out, so to speak. That would include two kids, a significant other, and, you know, six hours tops. I mean, I know six hours sounds like a lot of time, but when you're moving two kids and, and their essentials, we did figure out there's a short list of things that we should be working on, you know, but how do you leave all this food? Really? Seriously? How do you leave all this food? I've got cubes stacked up everywhere. You know, different houses, different locations, different covert places. But how do you move all the food? Really? In six hours? That's that's quite a bit. That's that's you know, you gotta think you got glass jars, canning jars, you got all those heavy cans. Even the dry stuff that you get from LDS is an extreme pain in the tail to move. So you need, you need to create two or three different lists, lists that you have to have, bare essentials, you know, rolling gear that you got to have, boom and bang stuff, but you got to eat too. So you got to make some choices there. Um, Dag on, this is going long, but you know, I, I've been emotionally challenged through this move like you wouldn't believe. And at some point I had to get myself together and say, okay, well, Let's make a video about it and explain to them, you know, how long it takes to get the weapons ready, get the ammo, get camping gear, you know, all that stuff has to be prepped. 
And I, right now, I got to tell you, I'm not so inclined to believe that I'm going to be bugging out anywhere. How do you bug out with two kids that are, you know, already challenged because now they're living on a farm? So we're going to, we're going to work on that. And in the coming months, I hope to be, um, a little better at the bug out deal. I don't have a bug out bag. I've got bug out cubes and uh, we'll be working on that too. All right. Hey, thanks for listening. Sorry it took so long. Stay prepped.